Hello, PJ. How are you? Good. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. Um, heard from coaches and, and teammates this spring about how you have kind of set the tone as a leader, not just for the defensive line, but really in the locker room in general. Mm -hmm. How important is that for you? And and how and, and and for you is this probably the biggest leadership role that you have taken on since joining the program? Yeah, definitely the biggest leadership role I've taken on. And uh, you know, I think it's extremely important. Um, you know, I think teams who have great leadership uh, have the best success. And, you know, I just try to go to work every day and, uh, you know, really be a guy who, who leads by example, who the younger guys can look at, who goes out there every day and gets the job done and uh, does it extremely well. So, you know, I think uh, teams who have the their hardest workers are their, are their best players and, and, and most experienced guys. I think they have the most success. So that's, that's just what I try to do every day. And, uh, you know, I'm taking on that leadership role, and, and I want to keep it going. Audrey Snyder. Hey, PJ, thanks for your time. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to ask you about Derek and the addition of, of bringing him into your room. What's it been like getting to know him, and what do you think he can do to kind of help you out this year? Absolutely. I really like Derek, man. He's a good dude um, off the field, man. I, you know, I'm just continuing to get to know him, but, you know, so far, man, I've, I've loved what he's been able to do um, on and off the field. You know, he's he, he's he gel well, he gels well uh, with the with the guys in the D line room and uh, you know out on the field, man. He's just getting better every day. You know, he's just working right now, um, getting in his playbook, learning the plays, and just learning our defense as a whole. But uh, you know, Derek, um, you know, he's a he's a worker, man. So he every day he comes to work, and you know that's what that's all we can expect from uh, everybody in the room. And, and you know, Derek's definitely doing a good job of that. Um, him being an experienced player at Duke and making a lot of plays over there, you know, I know he's going to continue to do the same. So uh, definitely proud of Derek, and I know he's going to keep getting better. T. Frank? T. Frank, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Sorry about that. It's a little it's a little touchy sometimes. I, I, I apologize. Um, I think we've talked this offseason about you've switched to nose tackle, correct? Yeah, I'm playing the uh, two out mostly, but uh, you know, I, I, I can play both. But yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, how have you felt about the t transition? And and I know you've added weight this off season. How do you yeah. feel playing at that uh, in the new situation? Yeah, you know, I uh, um, two years ago I played around three fifteen. So you know, I'm kind of. And, and last year we played left right, and uh, you know, I was at the two out bunch. It's not like I only played the three. So you know, it's it's been a smooth transition because I played it in the past. Um, you know, now I'm just playing it pretty much every down. Um, so, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm watching a lot of tape of, uh, you know, NFL guys who have played two I, um, you know, other college guys who, who've had a lot of success at the two I. So just studying that film and just learning, uh, the position, you know, I want to be fundamentally sound, uh, when I'm in there at the two I, because I know it's an important role in the team, you know, being able to shut, the, uh, shut down the run every down and be able to push that pocket and, and, and create plays all over the field, you know, in pass rushing situations. So, uh, you know, I really want to, be a dominant force inside, and I know it can help the defense. So I, I've loved the transition. Joe Giuliano. Oh, good morning, PJ. Good morning. Uh, do you recall what you were doing on this day one year ago, and how has uh, having a spring practice this year uh, kind of helped you guys in terms of uh, chemistry, uh, getting ready for the summer and beyond? Man, I was probably having a cup of coffee on my back porch listen to the birds chirp, man. I was, I was calm, <laughs> but, uh, nah, you know, spring ball is critical. Um, I always tell the younger guys when they ask me, uh, when they were asking me prior to us having spring ball, you know, during the winter, I was like, they were asking me how spring ball. And I tell them, I love it. You know, that's a time where you can really hone in on your craft. You're not, you're not getting ready for games every week. You're just every day you're going out there and, and it's an opportunity for you to get better. I love spring ball. And I really felt like my freshman year, that's when I made the biggest strides. You know, I wasn't, seeing the success on the field, but at the same time, um, you know, I was able to go to work every day. So after spring ball, going into the summer, going into camp, I knew what I needed to work on and focus on that allowed me to have the success I had that year. Um, so I definitely think it's, it, it, it's critical for us. And, you know, I think we're taking advantage of spring ball and, and hopefully it carries over to the summer. New bias Wilborn. Hey, um, first of all, man, good morning to you. Hope you're doing well. Absolutely. Same to you. Man, man, my respect, brother. Um, what have you noticed with Devin Ford? We got him later on. What have you noticed with him having to tackle him and having to deal with him every day? 
Oh, man, Devin's quick. Devin's explosive. I lifted next to him during the winter, so I was able to see the type of power he had in the weight room. And it definitely is starting to transition over to the field. You know, Devin's quick. He got quick feet. He can make those cuts, um, you know, not a lot of guys around the country can make. And, and you know, Devin just goes to work every day, man. Um, you know, clearly I'm not always with him. I'm not seeing everything he's doing. But when I'm going against him, I know he can make one cut and uh, and take it all the way. So, you know, I got to be in my gap, and everybody else has to be in, my, in their gaps uh, too. Um, so, you know, Devin's another guy who just goes to work every day. And, uh, you know, he's going to continue to do that. Or Brennan? Hey, PJ, how did you go about putting on that little bit of extra weight in a good way? Because I'm sure you want to kind of maintain your, you know, your speed and quickness and stuff. Right. Thank, thanks. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely was a process um, over over winter. Um, I told Coach Scott I wanted to do it. Um, and, and, you know, just you had to do it. You got to do it the right way. Like you said, you, you want to make sure it's a clean weight. So, you know, just uh, eating, eating more, not eating bad. Um, just uh, putting stuff in your body, like, uh, you know, extra, having an extra meal, having a protein shake before bed, um, you know, on creatine and stuff like that. So just doing it the right way. You know, it really wasn't, you know, I like to eat a lot of food, so it really wasn't too difficult for me. But, you know, like you said, you got to do it the right way so you don't lose all that, um, all, all, your, all your speed, um, your quick feet. So, you know, just adding a couple things to my diet um, and, and, and going to work every day, man, that's, that's how you do it. Good morning, PJ. Uh, off that question, what motivated you to add the weight? What? Uh, why did you decide to do it? And secondly, because I don't know if I'm going to get another shot, um, can you give your assessment of Nick Tarburton this spring and how um, his journey and getting back into the mix? Thank you. Yeah, you know, definitely looking at the film last season, um, I was lighter, much lighter than I was the season before. Um, and, and to be honest, I don't think we played the run that great. And, uh, you know, for me, I put that, I put that on myself, you know, that was my fault. You know, I was one of the guys in the middle and, uh, I don't think I did my job that well. Um, and, and, and I have to be better. And one of the main things I want to do is put back on, uh, the weight, um, and, and, and be stout. You know, I want the guys, uh, next to me, I want the guys, all the guys behind me to know, like when there's a run play, you know, those guys up the middle. Uh, are going to shut that down and they can worry about pass and making plays on the back end. So, you know, I just wanted to be an anchor in that middle and, and, and put the confidence in our coaches that when it's a running, uh, when it's a running play, it's going to be shut down by not only myself, but those guys uh, next to me in D tackle room and, and, and the DNs as well. Um, and the next question, Tar Burton, man, whoo, he's, he, he, Hey, he looks good. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. He's, he's looked extremely well. Um, even starting in the winter, he, he looked fast, um, quick and you know just just seeing where he's come from everything he's had to deal with um you know just to be able to bounce back and uh him to be out there every day is it's amazing to watch he's he's working his butt off and he's getting better every day man it's good it, it's it's really fun to watch he's a good guy too so proud of him Bob Founders hey PJ thanks for your time mm-hmm PJ, uh, everyone, when they look at the, the defensive line, they talk about uh, losing Jason Owe, obviously, and Shaka, two first-team All-Big Ten players. I wanted to ask you about uh, kind of moving on from Antonio Shelton. He's not at Penn State anymore. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about his value to the 2019 and 2020 uh, defensive lines and kind of maybe <clears throat> how you guys can replace him, uh, and especially you, if you're going to be playing some uh, – football on the nose right absolutely you know he was a heck of a player you know he was a, a veteran guy two-year starter man he um you know he really was he, he was another dominant force uh off front you know playing next to him i felt like we we did some great things you know and it's it's gonna be tough to replace um but you know here at penn state it's next man up mentality and those guys those guys got to feel that uh that that responsibility as well as myself you know uh you know when you lose a great player you know other players have to step up. That's why you get recruited to come to Penn State. That's why you come to Penn State to to, to play in those bigger roles. So, uh, you know, guys are working hard right now, man, and, and they're going to continue to get better. I think when the uh, the season comes around, I think we'll be uh, right where we left off, and I, I, I think we'll be able to take off and, and have a great season. Daniel Gallon. 
Hey, PJ, uh, when you got to Penn State a couple of years ago, you were the only McDonough guy. Uh, now, you know, you and Curtis uh, could be starting. Uh, Devon could have a role. Uh, what's that like to kind of have, you know, guys that you played with and knew from high school now with you at the college level? And what do you think that says uh, about, yeah. you know, program? Yeah, don't forget my man, Will Canusa, too, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, nah, man, uh, you know, I, I think we got a little pipeline going, man. And I'm, I'm happy to say I kind of started that. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm proud of them guys, man. Just seeing them mature over the years um, and become better football players uh, throughout the course of not only high school but college, it's, it's fun to watch. Um, and they're continuing to get better. Um, I try to lead those guys, and, and if they ever have a question or need to come to me about anything, you know, I try to be there for them because I know they can trust me because we, we've not only been together in college, like you said, we've been in, been in high school. So um, I want them guys know they can lean on me for whatever the situation is. But I, I really like to sit back and just watch them uh, flourish, you know. So, uh, you know, I don't try to to to, to really be a, try to be around them all the time, man, because I know they, they got their own thing going on with their life. But whenever they need me, they, they know they got me. Justin Morgenstein. Hi, right, PJ. Thanks for doing this today. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask about your brother, Sam, actually. And, uh, you know, how did growing up alongside him drive you competitively? And, you know, now that he's in the NFL, like, what role does he play in your football life? Right. That's my dog. That's my dog. That's, uh, whew, I do anything for him. I love him with all my heart, man. And just, just to see him and have the success he's having, man, living out his dream um, and where he's come from. You know, he, he, he started center for the Bears wasn't drafted um and just to see him continue to work every day when things weren't going his way he never threw in that white towel he never quit he, he just went harder so for me you know i can't ever throw in that white towel or quit myself because I, I i i got somebody who's done it who, who's beating the odds um and is having the success he wants to have so you know he's he's one of my biggest motivations like probably the biggest because you know when i'm having a bad day or, or stuff's not going my way i think to myself what my brother do and that's just go harder so that's what i'm gonna do Tyler Donahue. PJ, if I could uh, ask ask about two different defensive linemen. We've heard a lot of good things about Arnold Ebekede, uh mm -hmm. coming in. What's the early scouting report feedback from your first 14 practices with him at this point? And then Akeem Beeman is someone mm -hmm. who John Scott told us could play some defensive end, has some, some qualities that carry over there. Do you think we'll see Akeem bounce around the defensive line a bit this fall? Uh, so, AK, yeah, man, AK, my early assessment, oh, yeah, man, he quit, he passed off that, but he's going to get off that rock. And, uh, you know, guys have some trouble with that. You know, uh, he, he points that toe to that quarterback. He's going to get there whether you want him to or not. So, you know, AK's another guy in that defensive line room. He loves the work. We were out there, you know, getting a little extra after the lift yesterday. So, you know, he's just really um, like uh, Derek, you know, try, hopping into that playbook, learning everything, asking questions. So he's doing all the right things, and he's going to continue to get better. Um, as time goes on and he learns the defense. And yeah, Beeman, man, he can he's versatile. You know, that, that that's just the bottom line. He can play D and D tackle, might go out the linebacker. I don't know. But you know, Beam's doing a, a great job, man. So uh, you know, I'd love for him to to stay beside me, but you know, it's all good. If they want him to bounce around, he can. Uh he's quick, explosive, and, and does all the great things. So, you know, he can do he can do what the coaches want him to do. T Frank? Hey, PJ, do you see yourself, this is a silly question because I know the answer, but do you see yourself as a three-down player? And how has playing along multiple positions on the interior helped you as a pass rusher now that you're transitioning back into where you kind of started? Absolutely. You know, I definitely see myself as a, a three-down player, but, you know, I got to earn that. Every day you got to go out and earn that. You know, I got to prove to the coaches I can uh, play the run sound, and not, not sound, but play the run dominantly. And, and be able to get pressure on the quarterback. You know, I can't just sit here and say, like, I see myself as that. I got to prove that uh, to the coaches. I got to prove that to myself. And that's that's by going out there and doing it every day. Um, and, it, yeah, definitely, you know, definitely playing both uh, positions throughout my college career has definitely allowed me to be comfortable in all those situations. You know, I got to continue to get better in every aspect of my game. So, uh, you know, when I'm out there, they're, they're comfortable with me being out there every down. Nate Bauer? PJ, um, now that Phil Troutwine has been around the program for a year, what kind of influence have you have you seen him have on the offensive line room? Yeah, them guys love him, man. He And he, and he takes care of them dudes, too, man. So, uh, nah, 
Coach Troutwan, he's a great coach. He always has them dudes doing extra work, and they're always in Haluba. They might be in there now uh, getting extra work in. So, uh, you know, I got a, I got a whole bunch of friends. I love them dudes on the offensive line, so I'm always talking about talking to them about, you know, how's, how's Coach doing and, and, and how you liking uh, Coach. And they have nothing but great things to say about him. So, uh, you know, they're, they're definitely getting better from, from him, his coaching. And, uh, you know, I think he appreciates all the hard work that uh, them guys do. You know, there's, there's no complaining. Um, there's never been not once with all the everything they have to do. So, uh, you know, I think that relationship on that side is good. You know, they seem happy. So if they're happy, I'm happy. And, you know, everybody's happy. So. Tobias Woodward. Um, now that you got some time from last season, have you just really processed how weird everything was from the stops, the stoppages, no spring ball, having to start really fast, the season going the way it was? How did you guys process and how are you dealing with that going forward? Man, that's life. That's life for real. Like, you know, it's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be a smooth sailing. As much as you want it to, you know, you know, life's going to throw us challenges. And, yeah, it was weird, but, you know, at the same time, we got another season to get ready for. So we don't spend too much time dwelling on it. We might talk about it a little bit, but, you know, we're we in the moment right now. We're getting ready for this 2021 20, season, doing everything to make sure we're prepared for it. Mark Brennan. PJ, you lose uh, Mennon and Fries over on the offensive line, and we know a lot about Miranda, but who are some of the young interior O-linemen that, that we haven't seen a lot of that we should keep an eye out for? Thanks. Yeah, hey, I say Salim warmly. Um, he's definitely doing a great job. Juice Scruggs, um, Anthony Wigan. You know, those are guys inside that are really, really working their butt off, and they've made a lot of improvement, a lot of strides um, from last season and the season before and, and, and so on. So, you know, I've, I've been going to work. Uh, with them guys every day, it's, you know, it's been a great battle. I'm definitely getting better. I know they're getting better as well. So, you know, those are the guys that are really, uh, you know, just stand out to me. And they're they're a whole bunch, that that whole whole line room, like I mentioned, man. They they're they're workaholics. They don't stop, and they're always asking us questions. We're asking them questions. So, you know, across the board, I'm proud of them. But uh, you know, those three guys who I've been going against the most, so that's why I know um, is it, it, definitely getting improvement. But like I said, they're all getting better. Time for a few more. Tyler Donahue. PJ, can we keep the focus there on, on Juice Scruggs, a guy that was in your freshman class and, and had a, a, a big life-altering event? Now it seems like he's pushing to start and potentially be a first-team guard. Uh, what yep. level of football is he playing right now on the practice field? A high level. A high level. I, I've been battling with Juice ever since we uh, foot step on uh, step foot on campus, excuse me. And, uh, you know, he's he, – he, uh, another another guy who you got to look at for motivation sometimes, man, like, you know, uh, having that injury and, and taking so long to bounce back. He never once complained, never once held his head. He just got better, uh, did all his, the stuff he needed to do in the training room to get back on the field, and now he's back on the field. He's doing his thing. So, you know, he's continued to work hard, and, uh, you know, me and Juice go to work every day, and we have great battles. So, you know, I, I, I'm definitely happy for Juice and, and how far he's come, and I know he's going to continue to keep getting better as well. Last question, Joe Giuliano. Uh, PJ, we spoke earlier about the departure of Antonio, but what guys have you seen uh, who are primed to uh, take over that uh, starting spot uh, at the other tackle position? Uh, I think all the guys. I don't, I don't, I don't have one guy in in, in mind who who can fill that uh, role. I think it, right now it's everybody. You know, I think we're all competing uh, to, for the starting job. There, there's there's no starters right now. We we're we're all working. We all have to go out there and earn it. And whoever wants to start is going to start. You got to go out there. You got to prove it to the coaches, and you got to earn that role. And I think that's what we're doing right now. So you know, we're all going, we're all battling uh, for starting roles right now. And uh, you know, <laughs> when we step foot on that field in September, I guess you'll see who starts.